we're going to start. We're just after, so we'll get this going. Uh, so quick introductions. I'm Wayland Grange. Um, there's my Twitter. Do we even do Twitter handles anymore? Anyways, I did the hardware stuff, and I am Paul Whiting. I did the software part. Yeah, we don't really want to spend time talking about us. So this was one of the last renders of the board I did out of KiCad before we um, sent it off to the shop. Um, this is what we assumed it would look like. I actually never did a prototype that was this final board. Um, Copy Kid was joking with me just before this about his, he says he had a, did a talk at a hackers con convention where he said and the name of his talk was there's no rev two right like you don't have time when you're doing badges like this to do a second run and so really I never saw the finished badge proto board until the final run the the pre, I did have a prototype prior to this but that prototype did not have a joystick and it was kind of laid out a little different so I didn't know for sure if everything would work and everything didn't work but. We'll get to that point. OK, so a few points about the badge. One, it's meant to be broken. It's meant to look like this. Not necessarily. You don't have to. You can keep it all together. But each of these little parts is an individual component that you can use in your own Adreno or Raspberry Pi projects, OK? This little tiny one is an accelerometer, and it speaks I2C. That's what all of these cables are, is a quick connect for I2C. So if you have an Adreno at home and you want to hook it to an accelerometer, you now have an accelerometer or you want a joystick for your Adreno projects that you're working on at home, or you just want some blinky LEDs. All of these things are ITC, and they're meant to be worked with, they're meant to be played with with other projects, or um, SparkFun, I don't mean to sell any particular vendor, but SparkFun has a lot of quick uh, connect devices that you can add to this badge. You can just daisy chain them and throw them in here. They have like a keypad, they have like a speaker, um, some EEPROM, they have some other fun things. RFID reader. 14 segment displays. Oh yes, yeah, some, some those little LED segment displays. You can buy them and then um, incorporate them in the badge. And Paul will talk about how you can kind of do that. Um, there's also pins for an SAO header in front of this LED. So if you, you go to DEF CON and you get all those SAO headers, uh, you can throw one on right there, or SAO pins. SAO mini badges, excuse me. You can throw it on the front of there as well. So it's really just meant it's to be a hacker's badge. It's meant to be toyed with. It's a little different than our traditional badges we've done here at this conference in the past. Um, the, oh, yeah, here's an example of some of those uh, spark flun uh, devices thrown in line. Just, you can just keep daisy chaining more and more pieces into the badge. So this, the main processor on this chip is a Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, this image here, the one on the, Right, I have to look at my hand, that's sad. The one on the right is the one broken off of my badge. So you break it apart, and the one on the left is a Raspberry Pi Pico dev board that you can buy from a shop. They're almost identical. I mean, they're the same chip. The, the one that the badge has has slightly more memory, uh, flash space, and slightly fewer I.O. pins exposed, but it also has that quick connect port on it where the, the one from the store doesn't. Um, but yeah, if you were just gonna buy these from the store, this is what you would dev on. That's, we try to make this as similar to that. Like you can dev on this board and do whatever you want. It's a very powerful board. It's 130, up to 133 megahertz, 264 KB of RAM. Um, I, was telling some, I was telling some of the young guys this, and they're like, can it run Unity? Like, no, no, it can't run Unity. But this is more processing power than my first PC, okay? So like this is pretty good for a microcontroller. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, for a microcontroller, this is a lot. Um, a lot of interfaces, a lot of things you can do with. And it's really easy. So it's a really fun intro device if you want to start playing with um, embedded. Um, the badge itself, the, the, all of the little components on there, they are tiny. Tinier than I typically like to do on a badge. This is how tiny they are when you're hand soldering them. On all the prototypes, we hand soldered them. Um, so it, it, um, the picture on the right, was an early prototype for this year's badge that we totally scrapped. So it doesn't look like these, but it used the same, we had a lot of the same hardware, but like the design theme, we totally scrapped. I think going with Rick and Morty was probably the right idea. <laughs> but um, so the process of building the prototypes, this is the stuff I think is kind of cool, right? You, you got a stencil and you put down solder paste and then you take your tweezers and put them, or if you, if you had a pick and place, you'd do that. But for one or two Zs, you just place the parts on manually by hand on those little places of solder there. I show that picture because that, solder, that picture is a really pit, pretty picture. Like that solder pa paste went just where it's supposed to. You can see how fine that is on some of those pins. 
it usually doesn't work that well for me. So when I got one that worked, like the stencil worked without any smudging or mirroring, I was like, oh, I got to take a picture of that. And then I, do, I don't have a reflow oven. So what I use to melt the solder is I use a heat gun. And um, this, to me, is still magic every time I watch it. To watch solder paste turn to solder, not only when, when the solder paste um, turns to solder, like you see it connect, but it will actually center some of the pieces as it heats up. I don't even know. This is magic to me. But you'll watch as I'm going. You see how the pieces move? Yes, that transistor is supposed to be off like that, by the way. But um, you, you'll see these pieces kind of uh, shift a little. Sorry, I'm holding the, the heat gun and the camera in one hand, in two hands. It's a little hard for me to keep the camera on. But you can just see how, watch these little resistors uh, fall into place as, the, as it uh, heats them up. You see how they straighten up? Isn't that cool? I, that, that's the coolest to me. I don't know. Maybe it's not cool to you guys. But um, I thought I'd show you that because I get excited about that kind of stuff to just watch it all come together nicely um, after hours of putting things down there with tweezers. But yeah, that video should end. That's good enough. Um, I have to give thanks to all of the volunteers that helped us build these. Uh, I know this thing, thing early. We're not done. But I want to just give thanks to the, uh, the guys that helped assemble these. So when we actually ordered the final pieces, most of the parts were on there except any through hole parts and the screen. So we soldered on the screens, we glued them on, and then they soldered on the joystick and then the key, uh, the, the batteries on the back, and then they hooked up all the, the wiring and sh shoved them all in packages. So we had an assembly line. Uh, a lot of people helped volunteer. We appreciate their help to um, put all those badges together. And that's the hardware side of it. And then we get to the fun stuff. Well, I don't know. Personally, if you ask me, hardware is like black magic. I'm up there. We were up in the, um, in the, the hacking lab up there with the soldering irons and stuff. And I'm just looking at it like, wow, that would be cool. Right? And I, I, I gravitate towards the quick connect because I just plug and play, right? That's awesome. So uh, big cheers out to, uh, to Waylon for, for his great design on being able to do this. Um, so. I have never done microcontroller programming before this year. Of course, it's near the end of the year, so that does give me, like, I can say that I've been doing it for 12 months. But really, it's been more like six or seven months or something like that. Um, we first started out with some MicroPython. That was our, our previous badge that we were working on. For this one, we decided to go with CircuitPython. And I have to say, it's very easy to use, OK? And th these bullet points were taken from CircuitPython's uh, web page. You can go there and get all the information that you want about that. Um, the thing that I find very nice about it is that it, uh, if, you, if you take your badge and you plug it into a computer, it will show up as a file system, right? And then you can just go in there and modify the files, the code, directly. Uh, or I was actually had a saved copy of it just in case I did something stupid. Uh, and then you can copy it over. And the board will automatically reboot with that fresh code that you just installed there. So it's really awesome, very, very fr uh, friendly for new, new people like me. So this slide would have been much better at, say, you know, like 10 o'clock this morning or 10.30, whenever the, the first session was, as opposed to being the very last one. Um, you know, you put the batteries in, it works. You can also attach it via USB-C. Um, when it comes, when it starts up, uh, this is a uh, what, Rick or Morty. I don't, sorry, I don't watch. That. But uh, we got, it got the eyes looking at you, right? And you can control it with the, the joystick. Moves one eye. The accelerometer moves the other eye. Uh, there's if the, the joystick button. If you push that, it'll change the color of one of his eyes. There's a button on the back you can push. It'll change the color of the other eye. And that was it, right? Unless you held down the joystick button you would see all of the other demo code that we, we provided here for you. Um, so what, this, uh, what it goes to is a, a menu page that you can um, use the joystick to move that little ball around on the screen. And then you can use the, the joystick button to, to choose uh, which demo you want to run. Okay, And so we, we did provide uh, four demos. There was the eyes demo. My favorite was the Minesweeper demo. I thought this was really awesome. I enjoyed working on it. Hopefully you enjoyed playing it. Um, the, ne the neat trick with this one is that I used the, the LEDs on the board to indicate how many mines you have left. Okay, so you, you move the ball around. If you do one click, it will reveal what's under that spot there. If you do a long click or long press, uh, it will it'll put a flag there, 
right? And so then you can kind of keep track of how many flags. And as you plant more flags, you'll see each of the LEDs turning off until hopefully you win the game. Uh, I know at least one person won it, so congratulations for those who did that. Um, okay, there were other demonstrations. These ones um, don't really, I guess I could have made a video about them, but they, they don't make good, uh, just a single picture. Uh, so one of them cycles the, the, the lights around and you can control the speed by just pushing on the LED or the, the uh, joystick button there. There's also a color shifter, so depending on how the accelerometer is oriented will change the color. And so you can, in theory, uh, rotate your badge around to get every single color that it can represent, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, and so those, those were just kind of some ideas of things that we thought were kind of neat and interesting. Um, but really what this badge is about is, it's about you. It, it's about being able to have you go home, show this to your family and say, hey, look at the, the cool things we can do. Now what else should we do with it, right? Um, I, I understand that there was at least one person who decided that they were going to make a slideshow. And so they uploaded additional pictures in that and then they just had it rotate through. Um, you know, as, as Waylon mentioned, you can plug and play a bunch of other components in here and then you can, you can uh, make your own code modifications to do what, what, you, what you want it to do. Um, so uh, when you connect, connect it to your computer via USB-C, it will show up as a mounted file system. Um, and there's the, the main code file is code.py. Let's see, are we doing okay on time? Yeah, we're plenty. Um, and the, the badge will automatically reload the code, so you don't have to worry about it. Hopefully, um, you get your syntax and everything correct. If it doesn't, it will spit out an error message for you. Unfortunately, the screen is so small, it doesn't really help. So, um, if, you know, if you do run into problems that you can't resolve and you want to get back to a fresh state, we have provided the code that we originally flashed on, on, uh, on my GitHub page. Um, and as was previously mentioned, there is a contest for best modification. So. Look forward to seeing uh, the, the winners of that. One thing, I'm gonna interrupt you. Oh, One thing yeah. I really like about the badge, not, not, or just the Raspberry Pi Pico and CircuitPython or MicroPython on there, is like he said, it showed up as a file, mounted file system, but there's also a serial terminal that allows you to have a Python interpreter on the microcontroller. So like if you have PuTTY or you use Screen and you connect to the microcontroller, you can get right to a Python interpreter right there. And you can be like, GPO pin 12 on. And if you've got an LED on it, it'll turn on. Like you can directly run Python testing right, on the, right off the board like that. You don't have to like write a Python page and save it. You can test things natively in the Python interpreter, which is really kind of fun. Now you tell me, right? <laughs> Yes, it is pretty awesome. And, you know, so, so to be honest, you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of these microcontroller programming things. And so, you know, we can all learn together. You know, hopefully Waylon will always be here to, to help us out when we need it. Um, however, I will turn the time back to, to Waylon about his, the issues he saw. Yeah, so I mentioned in there, we put the joystick on there and never tested it. Um, turns out I put the ground on the wrong pin for the button. Um, it should have been to the one just to the left of it. Um, and so we had, um, I'm, there's this, on some of your badges, most of your badges probably have this little connector that's underneath the red X, like a little bridge jump right there. Um, and that's how we fixed it for the majority of the badges. Um, I actually cut off one of the pins of the joystick before we soldered it down and then made that bridge instead and that kind of worked. However, a handful of the badges um, that the, the joystick, even, even when I cut off the pin, it was still making contact. And so I had to do this other kind of connection where I removed that little bridge that you had, um, make a little black wire bridge from the pin of the, the microcontroller, and then this trace over here where the big red arrow's pointing, I just scraped it and broke it. So I broke that trace and made a different path. Um, and that's just because, like I said, I thought I followed the schematic, but these parts weren't really well documented. And so when they arrived and I realized that it didn't match up, we had to, had to do a last minute fix to get the button to work on the joystick. Um, also, we found some other issues um, about the badge. A lot of them won't turn on after one reboot for some reason. Um, CompuKid was very kind and he helped me figure out what the problem was. It turns out that the, the little flash chip that I'm using with this Raspberry Pi 
was not initially supported. Luckily, somebody else ran into this problem before us, um, and so they have a, a branch that had a fix. And so I just barely um, recompiled their ban branch, and um, like right four mi three minutes before this talk, just uploaded it to that same repo that Paul had right here. So there's a new file called firmware.uf2 on this repo. Um, and what you do is if you'll, on the back of the little, if, if you're having trouble, if you're not having trouble, don't worry about this. But if you are, um, there's two buttons on here, one that's labeled BTN and one that's labeled RST. RST is reset and BTN is just button. But you press them both down and then let go of the reset button and then, and then after a second, let go of the other button and, oh, after you've already plugged it into your computer. If you do that, then it'll reboot into um, bootloader mode where you can upload the new uh, Python bootloader. Just copy over that firmware U2, UF, UF2 file and it will um, reload the bootloader with the fix and it, shouldn't, and it should be resolved at that point. Um, I'm sorry about that issue. Unfortunately, it was kind of intermittent, so I didn't realize it until we started getting here and people were having trouble and then it took all day to figure out what the heck's going on and why is it an intermittent trouble like that. Yeah, and I, I had actually experienced that same issue where sometimes I put the batteries in and it just like wouldn't do anything. I'm like, what's wrong? So I figured, well, maybe I just need to take the batteries out and put them in and jiggle them around and eventually it worked, right? But um, yeah, it's good to know that it was actually, uh, there's a fix for that. On a hardware level, the fix is actually just buying that flash a few extra microseconds before it initializes it. Like 60, it was like something like 64 extra microseconds just to give the flash a little bit longer before it started talking to it and it would work. And so I guess some of the badges, sometimes they're happy and they're up and ready in the morning and some of your badges are not morning people. So uh, we had to get, have to make that modification. Um, we talked about that. Um, I do have some extra batteries if your batteries are dead. I talked about the joystick. So if your joystick's not working, um, if this talk was earlier, I would have told you to come upstairs to the circuit room, assembly room, but um, they've all closed up now. Um, and I told you this no screen information is not correct anymore. I thought just throwing new flashes would fix it because it would make the problem go away, but that's not true. So um, there's a new flash on the repo that Paul had here. Um, that's public repo besides Salt Lake City badge 2022. And I think that's it. So a um, few things, I, this is a Google forum, uh, anonymous, um, for feedback. This badge was totally different than what we've done in the past, right? We usually do some kind of challenge badge that's got some challenges, but after the conference, it's not very useful. So if you like this kind of new mod uh, direction where we're having a dev slash hardware hacking board, let us know. If you liked and you're, you missed the older type challenges, um, let us know. Or if you've got other ideas for what you want to see here next year, let us know. <laughs> and if you're if you're uh, trying to do your own software modifications or anything like that, I'm always willing to uh, to answer any questions or give uh, provide advice or feedback on that. You can hit me on Slack. Yeah. So yeah. Same. Same here. I think they might be moving away from the Slack. I don't know. There's a Discord server too now. I I try to be at both as long as they're both around. We'll see. But thank you guys and thanks for sticking around. Um, do you have any questions before we sit down? I think we have time. Yeah. Yeah. We have time. No questions. That makes it easy. Thank you again. Thanks.